All right, welcome back, everybody. So we are about to begin our second session, um, Fragmenting Desires, Understanding Today's Specialty Coffee Consumers. In the first session today, we you know, thought a lot and were challenged to consider what we believe specialty coffee to be. But we were focused mainly on the farming and processing activities. Farming and processing activities in the coffee system. And these activities are incredibly important when it comes to everything that happens downstream in the value stream, to borrow a metaphor that I actually learned here at Rico in 2019 from Red Bay Coffee's Cape Conte. But as important as they are, they don't dictate everything that happens downstream. All of the choices that are made by roasters and, you know, conversely, the signals that consumers send, the choices that consumers made, make don't dictate what roasters do, much less producers. It's important for us to pay attention to the signals that consumers are sending us and, you know, snarky barista tropes notwithstanding, I believe that we are paying attention and that we always have been. And if you look around and things don't look the same to you as they did five years ago or 10 years ago, well, that makes sense because, you know, a lot of things are different now. First of all, there is a lot more coffee consumption happening now than was happening 10 years ago, much less 20 years ago. Most of that is coming from you know, a new generation of consumers and from new consuming markets. And that's most of what we'll be talking about in this session. But I think it also bears keeping in mind that even people who have been drinking coffee this whole time, you know, preferences evolve. Think back to 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago, avocado toast was not something that most of us would have considered pairing with coffee. And now, you know, regardless of how you personally feel about the taste of avocado toast or the symbolic weight that it has assumed in political discourse over the past couple of years, you know, it's not something that you would be surprised to see on a menu here in Boston or in Bangalore, as well as Brisbane. But enough toast talk. It's not lunchtime quite yet. Got a couple speakers to watch before we get there. Um, in coffee terms, you know, as I said before, yeah, most of the time, most of the consumption that we're seeing, the growth that we're seeing, is coming from new consumers and new markets. A lot of the macro level discourse about these new markets focuses on China uh, because of its size. But all over the world, there are consumer markets growing and they are being driven by different factors that are relevant to the culture that is consuming it. So, we are going to hear during this session about, gosh, we're gonna hear from three speakers, but because of their expertise, we get insight into something like nine or 10 countries, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, we're gonna start with a look at three countries from Noah Berger, who did sociological research into coffee consumption and the coffee market in France. Um, compared that to the, the growing coffee consumption, the coffee market in Brazil, and then her lived experience took her to Israel, and she'll bring in the coffee consumption and coffee market of Israel for comparison. It is my pleasure to welcome Noah Berger to the stage. <laughs> 